Alrighty, hi everyone. So I've made a few time lapses of me doing pottery before, but this is the first time I've actually recorded myself in real time trying to throw a piece. And this doesn't go as planned, uh, but I'm okay with that because it's one of those things in pottery where stuff doesn't go to plan all the time and you kind of just have to learn to be okay with it. So I'm throwing quite a bit of white clay actually and um you're gonna see here it's about to pop off yeah because it's um not properly mixed there's some really hard white clay mixed with um some softer white clay and i mixed them to try to balance it out and i honestly shouldn't have done that in retrospect i should have just gotten different pieces of clay but i am stubborn which is something that pottery is helping me kind of unlearn, actually. I'm getting a lot better at letting things go and accepting that things don't go to plan um, because pottery is one of those things where things don't go to plan basically every time you do it. Um, and basically what I'm going to be doing in this voiceover is just kind of talking about what I'm doing, talking about like my thought process and, you know, afterthoughts. Um, and also just talking a little bit in general. And keep in mind, I've been doing pottery since February of this year, which is 2022 for those in the future. Um, so, you know, I have been doing it for a while and I'm at a place where I like the work I do, but obviously I am absolutely not a pro. I don't know everything. I don't think I even know all that much. I just do it because I really, really like it. I like it a lot. Um, I like creating i like the possibilities of you know the different shapes you can make the different glazes you can try i just love everything about it it's therapeutic in a way it also feels good like physically because you have to exert some physical effort especially right now with this piece of clay that i'm working on here because there is that harder white clay mixed into it so what i'm doing right now is i'm trying to center it which if you don't know what that means, basically to work on a pottery wheel, you have to center the clay exactly in the middle of the wheel. And it's not centered right now and you can tell because it's really, really wobbly. So basically you know it's centered when it's not wobbling. This took a while. <laughs> Centering usually doesn't take me this long, but sometimes it does. Um, that was partially just because this was my first piece of the day, partially because, again, there is that harder clay mixed in there that I just shouldn't have mixed, but I didn't want to not use it, you know, I didn't want it to go to waste, because I do prefer white clay over red. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm really struggling right here. I honestly, I do think I'm going to um, title this video, you know, Struggling in the Studio or something, because sometimes... As you can see, I'm getting a little frustrated. Sometimes you just struggle. Sometimes it just doesn't work. And I think another reason why I like pottery so much in the therapeutic sense is because it's kind of helped me realize that that's okay. When things don't work, I think it's honestly mellowed me out a little bit. I'm still... Okay, we're getting, we're getting somewhere with this. Also, please... Nobody make comments about, um, you know, the phallic, <laughs> phallicness of the, um, form that I'm working with. That's just how it goes. Oh, did someone just knock on my door? Or am I losing it? I hope someone didn't knock on my door. I'm alone. I don't want to answer the door. Anyway, back to this. I am making some progress, still definitely, oh man, there's just that big ol' bulge down there. You can see I'm really struggling to bring it down. Oh yeah, so with centering, what you do is you kind of just, you push the clay upward and then you move it downward. Um, and that's really the best way I could describe it. Okay, I'm making a little bit of progress. That clay is definitely fighting me, though. Okay, we're getting better. We're getting better. Mm, kind of. <laughs> this is also a lot of clay. This is a pretty big amount. I honestly don't remember what I was um, going into this with the mindset of making. I think, like, a little vase for holding flowers or something. All right, you're getting better. 
I'm trying to fill gaps of silence because I don't really, I don't really want there to be cuts in this video, but also I do really do center this for like a while. <laughs> oh, and my room just turned on. All right. Well, I guess I am going to go turn that off because yeah, I can't have that on right now. So hold on. Update, I'm back. And while I was up, I um, checked my door and there was no person or package or anything there. So I might just be hearing things. Okay, so we're starting to see that I am getting a better puck. It's called a puck whenever it's like the centered piece of clay. Um, and the puck shape depends on like what you're planning on making. So I think this is going to be a taller one because I am making more of a tall shape. But if you wanted to do like a bowl, it would be a little shorter. And if you wanted to make a plate, it would be, first of all, a lot less clay. <laughs> and second of all, a lot shorter. <laughs> but there we go. Starting to get a grip on it. Well, I mean, I've had a grip on it, but you know, <laughs> the figurative grip. <laughs> oh, no, it goes back. See, sometimes that is something that you do as well, where you get it basically perfectly centered and then you go back in to get that perfect center and you knock it off center somehow even more. I actually do that a lot. And I think I do that a lot in this video, uh, which is another reason it takes so long. In addition to it just being really hard. I think at this point I did admittedly start to get a little bit frustrated because it's also like, um, you know, now that I was recording this, I also did feel pressured and it does kind of always seem like the universe is against you in the sense where when you record yourself doing art is when you mess it up. You know, I've had many a time lapses where I just ruin piece after piece because sometimes that's just how it is. This piece, if I'm remembering which one this is properly, this piece also doesn't even turn out that great. You know, it doesn't turn out I lose a lot of um, clay when I'm trying to center it because, you know, I have to keep my hands wet and water and clay mix and it makes, you know, a little bit of slip and it just takes away from the shape. So I don't make as big of a piece as I was wanting. And also the lip of it, um, if I'm remembering, is uneven, but it's kind of cute. But also now that I'm thinking about it, I was in the studio yesterday and I did not see that piece there. Did I? Maybe it broke when it was being moved off the bat. The little thing that it's on right now, so it's on the wheel, and then you can see that there's a flat little piece. Oh, I'm opening it, even though it's <laughs> clearly not centered. <laughs> I think at that point I was just giving up, to be honest. Oh, and I'm not even going in straight. That's great. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want this to be a, a critical video because honestly, I'm not very critical of myself when I do pottery. Of course, when things go wrong, you never want them to go wrong. And so sometimes that does feel bad, but you know, I'm at the point now where I'm not upset. If something gets upset, I just kind of take it as a note for things to work on in the future. Like I got some bowls back yesterday and the glaze on it I didn't apply it anywhere near as thick as I could have. And so they are just not at all the image that I had pictured in my head. And that's okay because now I know for those glazes, I can go a little ham. I was a little reserved because I hadn't used a few of them before, but no, I can go a little crazy with those. So that's exciting. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm trying to bring this back into being centered. I don't know how this got so wobbly so fast. I mean, I do know it's because I opened it um, before it was centered and opening it means um, that thing I did with my finger. I feel like that was a little bit self-explanatory opening. I opened the piece of clay. I am trying to center it now. And if I'm smart, what I would do is use a little needle tool to take that rim off, but I don't think I'm going to because I don't want to get rid of clay because I remember wanting this to be tall. Okay. And now I'm trying to lift the walls <laughs> before it's centered. 
I'm not, this is not going to be a mean video, but I am able to point out things that I do that I honestly shouldn't have done because it is a learning experience. Every time you do pottery, it's a learning experience, which is something I love about it. But one of my favorite things about it is that anyone can do it. You know, like it's one of those things where it's a lot more of a, mm, I don't know if technical skill is the right word, but it's different from drawing and painting because while obviously anyone can do those things, there is a little bit of that just natural talent that some people have. You know, I draw and paint and I have for a long time, but there are still a lot of people who are a lot better at it than me and that's okay. But with pottery, you know, everyone starts on the same place or at the same place, sorry. And just through repetition and through learning and observation and just practice after practice, you get better. You don't need to have a natural skill for it. It's kind of an even playing field in that way. And I really like that. Because it means that anyone can get into it. Grayson, please needle tool that. <laughs> I'm really trying to figure out where I take this. Because... How it looks now is not how it looks when it's finished, and I don't know how it gets to where it looks when it's finished. So what I'm doing now is, as you can see, it's getting taller. What I do, um, it's called like raising the walls or like lifting, pulling. It's called a pull, Jesus, but whatever. You can honestly call it any synonym of that, and like someone would know what you're talking about. But basically what you do is how I had the sponge on the outside. You don't have, oh my God, I needle tool it. Thank you. I think I, I mess up. Yeah. <laughs> I messed up the needle tool. There we go. Okay. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. It's still really thick though. I could pull that a lot more. But basically I have my sponge on the outside. You don't need to use a sponge for this, but um, for me personally, it helps because it makes it just gives more grip and also evens it out in my opinion. Um, but basically you take either your fingers or your sponge and you dig into the clay a little bit on the outside with your other hand on the inside for support. Um, and you just dig in a little bit at the bottom and then you slowly move upwards so you're pushing clay upwards that's called a pull and that's how you make tall things in pottery i think this is the point where i realized that this structure is not at all what i imagined and that i'm just gonna have to work with that <laughs> because this is not a very good piece i think i could put some funky glaze on it once i find it because i actually still <laughs> i don't know where it is it might be wrapped up somewhere in the studio i'll check eventually. But I can put some funky glaze on it, which is another cool thing of pottery. I feel like this is just a pottery promo video unintentionally, but also maybe this was intentional. I don't know. I just like what I do and I recorded it and now I'm talking about it. So yeah, I guess this is pottery promo. Anyway, another cool thing about pottery is that even if you aren't super duper obsessed with the shape of what you made, for example, I'm not super obsessed with this, but something that can make this piece go from like a 5 out of 10 to a 7.5 out of 10 is glazes. I love glazing. There's so many possibilities and so many exciting... Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> I think I realized what the knock on the door was. It's not a knock on the door. It's the audio of the studio. It's the audio of this video. <laughs> That's totally what it is. Wow, I feel a little silly. I was honestly getting scared. I kept hearing these weird little knocks and bumps, and I was like, oh my god, it's not my dog, because he's right next to me. Someone's breaking in. No, it's uh, the fact that I was recording with other people in the room. Which is fine. There actually weren't that many. I think it was only me and one other lady that were throwing on the wheels, but there were like two or three instructors there. Just chilling. <laughs> 
See, this would honestly not be that bad if it was just not so uneven. Look at that wiggle on that rim. Or I guess that dip before the rim. But it's okay. See, again, not trying to be critical. Honestly, I mean, I guess I can be critical because that's how I learn. But the little dip there being uneven is honestly not as bad as the sides of the bottom being uneven. Am I about to call this a day? No. Okay. I had that tool and I was like, what am I doing? Oh, yes. I try to trim that because it's uneven. <laughs> I'm really thinking hard here. <laughs> I don't know how I got to this moment and you can tell. <laughs> but isn't that fun? I think that's so fun. Even though it's not fun in the moment, you know, you never really want to struggle. But I think struggle is healthy in certain contexts like this one. It's frustrating, but it's also important to learn. One of my instructors says this thing about how pottery is like, um, oh God, how does she word it? Ashley, how do you word it? <laughs> about it not being, you know, you can't be like super obsessed with things that you make until they're fully finished. Oh, and I messed up that needle tool because anything can happen. You know, you can make the best bowl you've ever made. And then you try to take it off of that bat, that red thing right there. And uh, you break through the bottom and that bowl's now ruined. Precious, that's the word. Pottery is not a precious hobby, I think is how she wears it. I could be wrong, but you get the sentiment. You have to be okay with letting go and things not going right. And I'm okay with this one not going right. Although I will say, I really hope I adjust that lip because <laughs> it's not a good shape. It's just observably not interesting. <laughs> you can really see me trying to figure out what the fuck to do with this, huh? It's kind of fun. Because honestly, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Oh, it is. There we go. And it's done. That piece is done for. <laughs> but I honestly, I really like that. I really like how the lip folded in on itself, how it looks like it kind of melted. And if I trim the bottom of that enough and the sides of it to where it's more of a symmetrical, like, body, I actually think that this could be really cool. If I do, like, a plain white or even a clear glaze on the bottom and then do, like, a really fun, bright dip of the lid, do some little drip downs or something, I think that this could look like a cool little art piece. Not practical. But sometimes practical things are cool. I really like making, or sorry, impractical things. Sometimes impractical things are really cool. That's what I meant to say. I really like making impractical things because um, I can just have fun with glazes and see, you know, how they fit into crevices and how they blend. And they look really cool. And that's just my prerogative. And that was me throwing this piece. I hope you enjoyed this random little video. I wanted to make a longer pottery video because, again, all I had done were time lapses before. So if this is something that you're into, let me know. It's okay if you're not, but I might still post anyway. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching and bye.